welcome to Vintage Garage. Glad you're here. This week we'll finish the restoration of the Royale RP2. First we'll install the numbers and various safety decals on the car. Then we'll silk screen up a fresh batch of Vintage Garage t-shirts to wear at the races when we debut the car. If you've never silk screened your own t-shirts, you want to stay around and see how that's done. Lastly, we'll install a fuel cell in the Royale and that will finish its restoration. So stay tuned, we have another full show this week. Glad you're here. The first project today is to install the graphics on the Royale RP2 that we've been restoring. We have a number of decals. We have the safety decals that came with the fire extinguisher system that we installed last week. We'll put this large E decal near the release handle on the fire extinguisher system. We also have this decal here that's supposed to be mounted near the on-off switch on the car. And we'll probably use one of these two decals down here to indicate the direction of rotation of that switch. We also have some Monoposto racing decals. This is the series that the car will be raced in next season, and we want to put those decals on the car. We also have a couple of original SCCA decals from the 1968 period. The car originally came with number 98 on it. We looked through the records of Monoposto Racing for the past few years, and we don't see that any other drivers are using number 98, so we thought we'd use that number. We printed a 9 and we printed an 8 on our computer. This is an aerial font and uh, we made it bold face type and it's about a 920 point font which we think will be just right for the size on this car. We'll cut the numbers out of this paperback vinyl sheet and we'll try to make all three sets the same. So let's get started. Before I cut out the numbers I like to make a mark at the top and bottom of the number with numbers that have rounded edges it's sometimes very difficult when you're putting the number on the car to make sure that it's vertical so I like to put a little registration marks on it so that I can be sure I have the number vertical when I mount it on the car Okay, we've now finished cutting out our numbers. Now we need to turn them over and transfer that to the paper back on the vinyl sheet. We'll start by cutting off a nice square piece of vinyl. And we'll set the roll aside. So we'll just carefully trace out our numbers on the sheet. Now we've traced the outline of all the numbers on the paper back of the vinyl. And now we just have to cut the letters out of the vinyl. And we're done. We've now uh, cut three eighths and three nines. Now it's time to move over to the Royale RP2 and install the graphics on the car. We're now at the front of the Royale RP2. The first step to installing the numbers in the white ball on the nose is to carefully remove the paper backing from each of the two numbers. This doesn't have to be perfect because once we get to an event our numbers may change and we'll have to take the numbers off and replace them with other numbers. We've transferred our registration mark to the vinyl number so that we can get it lined up nice and straight. Once we have the vinyl laying flat on the number ball we use our finger and we go around and we get all the air bubbles and wrinkles out of the numbers. That looks pretty good. That looks nice and straight. And we're done. That came out pretty nice. Looks a little temporary, but that's all to the good. Now let's go around and put some of the other decals on the car. Last week we installed the fire extinguisher system in the car and it came with this nice set of safety decals. 
The halon in the fire system is released by a red T-handle at the driver pulls in the event of a fire. And we need to put the E decal somewhere near that T-handle. We carefully peel the decal off the sheet and then we try to place it vertically on the car so that it looks nice and that it's close to the T-handle. Now we'll move to the right of the number ball on the left side of the car, down on the under tray below the driver. Here we want to put the SCCA decal. This is where the decal was on the car when we got it. It was probably there most of the life of the car. Again we rub the decal with our fingers, try to get out any air bubbles. Now let's go around to the other side of the car and attach the Monoposto Racing Series decal to the engine cover. This is our favorite spot for the decal. We put it on the engine cover and we have one on the Titan and the other cars. This is the series that will race the car in next year and we like to promote the series. The triangular shaped decal on the safety decal sheet is meant to mark the location of the master on-off switch on the car. This is one of the first decals that corner workers look for if they come upon the car and it's in trouble and the driver seems incapacitated. That switch allows a corner worker to turn off all electrical power to the car. We'll also mount one of these small decals at the bottom of the sheet on the car right below the switch. That decal indicates the direction of rotation of the switch. Still on the right side of the car, now we need to mount the 98 in the number ball. This is a little bit tough because the top half of the number has to be mounted on the cockpit surround, but the lower half of the number has to be mounted on the body under tray. We set the number across so that it spans both pieces. Once we have the number pressed down and smoothed out and most of the air bubbles out, we use a scissors to cut the line between the two body parts. Using our finger again, we press down the edge of the number to make sure it makes good contact with the body. Now it's time to stand back and admire our work. We've now finished installing the graphics on the car and they came out great. First we installed the number in the number ball on the nose of the car. Then we installed the e-decal next to the fire extinguisher release handle. We also installed the numbers on the side of the car on both the left and the right number ball. We also installed the master on-off switch decal and the Monoposto Racing Championship decal on the engine cover, and they came out great. Now that we've finished the Royale RP2, we want to debut the car at the races. Before we do that, we need to print up a new batch of team t-shirts. The ones we've been wearing for the last year are now getting pretty faded and dirty, so it's time to make a fresh batch. The first step in making t-shirts is to get the base color right on the t-shirt. We started with a couple dozen white t-shirts that we got at Walmart and we dyed them yellow using RIT dye. We also bought a couple of yellow sweatshirts at Walmart that we're going to silk screen as part of the same batch. The first step to building the silk screen itself is to build a frame that will hold the screen nice and tight. We bought an 8 foot section of 1 by 2 pine. You can get this at Lowe's or Home Depot and it's real inexpensive. We'll start in the middle of the piece of board so that it's easier to handle and we don't have any real long ends. And we'll just make our first cut at 45 degrees right in the middle.
So this will be our frame. We have two short end pieces, two long top and bottom pieces, and we're certain that our squeegee can fit nicely in the box. We'll set those pieces aside for a second, and we'll mix up a small batch of 5-minute epoxy. We'll just apply a little epoxy to the corner. We'll put the piece that adjoins it next to it. And we'll use our bow stitch finish nailer to put a couple of nails in the job. Got to be careful not to put a nail in your finger using this tool. We now have a nice frame for our silk screen. The next step is to staple a screen to the frame. This is a roll of screen material, and we get all these supplies from Pearl Arts and Crafts on Rockville Pike. The screen material nowadays is polyester, and you want to use the real thing. It has a very fine weave. We now center our frame in the material, and we just wrap the cloth around the frame, and we use an ordinary staple gun to staple the cloth to the frame. The first edge on the other side, you don't pull too tight. But then on the final edge, you pull it pretty tight. Last year we made these t-shirts, and this was our silkscreen box and silkscreen that we made. We can still use this to make as many more t-shirts of this design as we'd like. This year we want to do a slightly different design. We went to our computer and we printed the words Vintage Garage using our special font. We then made a rounded cornered rectangle around it, sort of like a logo. We're going to put that in the breast pocket area of the t-shirts. We took our printed design down to ARL Signs on Goody Drive in Rockville and they made us a sheet of 10 decals. This year we're going to start with a piece of blank acetate and we're going to use one of the professionally made decals that we got from ARL signs. So the first step is we'll cut off one of the decals so that we don't ruin any of the others. We'll set the rest of these aside. We'll use these decals for various other projects around the shop or to mark our toolboxes or other racing supplies. We'll put down a sheet of white paper here just so we can see what we're doing. It's not really needed. Then we'll lay our sheet of acetate over it. Now we want to put our sign directly in the middle of the sheet. So we peel the front off, being careful to leave the backing on so the letters stay nice and straight. Okay, then we place that on the sheet. Once we have the decal firmly applied to the acetate, we carefully peel off the paper backing. And there we are. What we're left with is our logo design on the acetate, and it's much sharper than anything we could do on a computer printer. The process of putting the design on the screen is a photographic process. This is, in effect, our negative. Now our pattern fits nicely into the screen. We've also cut a piece of glass that also fits into the screen, and we use that to hold our pattern nice and flat during the exposure process. Now we need to mix the photo emulsion and apply it to the screen. We'll also put down a sheet of masking paper so that cleanup is easier. We're going to use a Hunt Speedball screen printing photo emulsion kit. And just like the screen material, you can get this kit at Pearl Arts and Crafts on Rockville Pike. Inside the kit, there's a large bottle of photo emulsion and two smaller bottles of sensitizer 
and a set of instructions. We're going to use a plain kitchen bowl and spoon to mix the photo emulsion and sensitizer. Once mixed, the mixture is water soluble and we can use regular warm water for cleanup. We now need to dim the lights at Vintage Garage while we mix the photo emulsion and sensitizer. Once mixed, it can only be handled in the dark. The photo emulsion is mixed at a ratio of four parts photo emulsion to one part sensitizer. We're going to use the spoon to measure the amount accurately. We're going to put in four spoonfuls of photo emulsion. Okay, that's one spoonful of sensitizer. Now we mix that up. The sensitizer is yellow and the photo emulsion is blue. And you know you have it mixed when you have a nice green color. We'll turn the screen upside down and we'll just carefully dab a little bit of the photo emulsion all the way around. We'll use the same squeegee to spread the photo emulsion that we're going to use to spread the ink in the end. You want a thin even coat of photo emulsion and it needs to cover every pore in the polyester screen. We now have a nice smooth layer of photo emulsion on the screen and we need to put it in a dark closet until it dries. We need to now clean up our materials before the photo emulsion turns into the rubbery mix it does. The photo emulsion has been drying now for about five hours. We put a nice flat sheet of plexiglass on the table so we have a nice flat surface. And we've hung a photo flood bulb above the work area. Now we need to turn the lights off at Vintage Garage, get out our screen with the emulsion on it, bring it over to the table, set it under the photo flood bulb, and do our exposure. We'll set our box down face first. We'll put our image in the box. We'll put a sheet of glass over the image to hold it in place. We know it's going to fit. And we'll center it right under the light bulb. We'll turn on the photo flood bulb, look at our watch, and begin a 15 minute exposure. We've now exposed the photo emulsion on the screen for exactly 15 minutes. What we need to do is we need to move the screen over to the sink. At the sink we want to wash the screen thoroughly. We want to make sure we get all of the photo emulsion that was under the black lettering out of the screen. So we'll turn off the light now, ending our exposure, and move over to the sink. We'll gently wash it on both sides. And we're done. We now have a nice sharp image in the silk screen. Now we'll set the screen aside to dry overnight and resume with the printing of the t-shirts first thing in the morning. It's now the next day and every flat surface at Vintage Garage is covered with either a t-shirt or a sweatshirt. While we're at it, we'll also silk screen the front of two of our car covers. The final step to preparing the screen before we put the textile ink in it is to run an edge of masking tape all around the screen. That's to prevent accidental leakage that might get on the shirt and spoil the job. So we'll do that now. We like to use extra wide masking tape. We can put the tape anywhere on the screen as long as we don't cover up our image. We'll also run a line of regular masking tape all the way around the screen to finish up the job. We'll also put a small line of masking tape on the inside corners of the screen just to add extra protection so that the ink can't leak out. We're now ready to apply the image to our t-shirts and sweatshirts. 
I actually put a heavy craft envelope inside the shirt. I do this so the ink doesn't bleed through and get on the back of the shirt. Right here is the side of the shirt where we're going to put the image. I'm going to lay our silk screen box right down where I want the image. We're using a non-toxic ink by Speedball. This is a screen printing ink and we like the color green. It's a pretty simple process. We spoon a little bit of the green ink into our silk screen box. We don't need very much. And then we use the rubber squeegee to apply the paint to the screen. It takes a little practice to know how many times to run the squeegee back and forth. We've done this quite a few times over the course of a number of years. We think that's about right. And we carefully lift the screen off the shirt and there's the image on our shirt. And there's one sweatshirt. That came out real nice. We've now finished putting the small Vintage Garage logo on all the left breast pocket areas of all the shirts that we want to do. Now we want to put the large Vintage Garage image on the back of some of those shirts, both of the sweatshirts, and also the front of our car covers. Just like before, we start by putting ink into the screen. And we carefully lift the screen off the shirt and there's our logo. That came out great. The UPS man just dropped off this great big box and it's the custom fuel cell that we ordered from FuelSafe. If you remember three weeks ago we took the original gas tank out of the car boxed it up and sent it to fuel safe. They duplicated it with a modern fuel cell and that's what's in the box. They did a real nice job of packing the unit. They used Instapack foam. We'll set it on a piece of padding so we don't scratch it up. Let's test fit it in the car and see how it fits. Now we can remove the seat. It's just sitting in the car and we'll mount that permanently once we have the fuel cell installed. We cut a piece of foil faced insulation to fit against the firewall of the car. We're going to put the fuel cell in against that insulation. The fuel filler comes out right between these chassis tubes just as we specified. We're now over at the throatless shear and we've measured a piece of one inch aluminum strap to about 21 inches long. We think that's about an inch long, but we'll start with that piece and trim it to fit. We have this round piece of chassis tube that's exactly the same size as the tube we need to mount the strap to to hold the fuel cell. We're going to use that as a pattern to bend this strap so that it has the right diameter to go around that chassis tube. We've now formed the aluminum strap nicely around this simulated chassis tube. We'll have to mark and drill the other half of this hole. We finished bolting the mounting strap to the car and the fuel cell now is firmly mounted to the car. We now need to run the hose from the carburetor to the fuel pickup and then we need to run a hose from the vent out to the back of the car. We've threaded the fuel line up from the rear of the car and we have this nice AN barb fitting. Now all we need to do is 
bolt the seat in the car, and we're done. We had a great time at Vintage Garage this week. Hope you enjoyed the show. First, we installed the graphics on the Royale RP2, and they came out great. Next, we silk screened up a big batch of t-shirts, which we'll wear around the paddock and in the shop. Lastly, we installed the fuel cell in the Royale RP2, and that finished the restoration of the car. It came out great, and we're looking forward to driving it next season. Next week, we have another full show. We're going to start with a field trip to Hershey, Pennsylvania for the annual AACA meet. They always have a large collection of vintage race cars, and we'll get some video of their demonstration runs. In addition, we'll get some shots from around the flea market. It's the largest flea market dedicated to old cars in the world, and it's a lot of fun. When we get back from Hershey, we'll load up the Lola T492 for the race at VIR. So until next week, thanks for coming. Glad you were here. Keep the shiny side up. We'll see you in a week. If you'd like more information about any of the projects we've worked on today, please visit our website at www.vintagegarage.com. There's a link to our email address on the website. Please email us. We'd like to hear from you. Till next time, keep the shiny side up. Thanks for coming. See you next week.